welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I'm back to do a, another tag video. This one is called The Philosophy of Reading Book Tag. I saw Eric from Break Even Books do this, and the original tag was created by the booktube goddess. So I've linked both of those videos down below. And there are 20 questions here about reading and we're going to have fun with them. So question number one, what's most important, a good character, plot, or message? And for me, it is a good character. Now this is, of course is presuming it's a fiction book, but if the character is not compelling, I don't care if your plot is good, and I certainly don't care what your message is. I'm, I've never been a reader who was looking for the author's intent or message, and so really the character is driving the story for me. And it doesn't mean that I have to like your character, but I do have to understand what your character's motivations are, what is driving the character to do the things that they do. Even if I am screaming at them going, why are you doing that? That's just going to mess your shit up more. I still need a character that is compelling. Question number two. Should one read books about ideas or opinions they disagree with? And I'm going to say it depends. As a lover of history, yes, I think that you should read varying opinions about different things and not just stay in your echo chamber. But where it depends is when it comes to your mental health. Nobody should intentionally read something that is hate-filled when they are not in a good mental space for it. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that is written, like the opposing sides, are hate-filled. So I know that Ashley at Bookish Realm has been a great example of this, as she has read many different political books, even about Trump himself. And she's not a Trump fan but just kind of getting an idea of what is motivating him and doing like why he's making the decisions he's doing. So that would be an example of reading a book from someone that they know they're going to disagree with. It, that's not a bad thing because sometimes it just helps you understand where someone's coming from, which kind of is going to go into my answer for this next question. So question number three, as tech advances, what do you think will be the role of books? So that I think is on the premise that technology will have a lot of the how to do things and you don't need books to teach you those sort of things. But I think that the books are going to still have the same purpose they have always had information, entertainment, and empathy. One of the main reasons our society should read is to help create that muscle, that responsive empathy. Empathy is where you can see somebody else's point of view. That does not mean you agree with it. And empathy is extremely important in any society. It is what allows us to have civil discourse. It is what allows us to compromise and work with other people. And to understand that just because somebody has a different point of view doesn't mean that they are awful human beings and you should cut them out of your life. Books are going to still do the same thing that they do now. Question number four, how important are summaries, reviews, and art in your book choosing? And I don't look at reviews beforehand, so not at all. Art can be compelling and make me pick up a book faster. And for summaries, if the art hasn't already drawn me in, then reading the summary will kind of give me an idea of whether or not I want to pick it up. Book art, I think, primarily kind of draws my attention, and then the summary can keep my attention. And the reviews, to choose the book, no, not at all. Number five, should one ever skim or scan a book? And I'm going to say, yes, that is perfectly okay. And maybe that goes back to kind of how I read. I will be very invested in reading, but as my mind starts to wander, I then kind of start skimming the next couple pages just to kind of see, am I going to have the attention span to continue reading right this moment? And if I don't, then I put it down and pick it up later. 
if I do, then I will go back and read until I get to like the end of the chapter, end of a point. So yeah, I think it's fine. Or even looking at it from the standpoint of a student, yes, sometimes you don't have the time to read every single thing that your teacher has given to you. Skim reading or scanning is an invaluable skill that will help you get the gist of the information when you don't always have the brain power to read everything fully. So yeah, I think it's fine to skim or scan a book. Honestly, I feel like those who read audio books at more than 1.5 speed are essentially skimming or scanning a book. Six, should reading always be enjoyable? And I'm gonna go with no. It truly depends on what you're reading. For me, reading news articles, that's not enjoyable, but I do that to get an idea of what's going on in my local town. Reading fiction, typically enjoyable, but sometimes I like to go outside of my comfort zone, and that can be an uncomfortable for reading. For example, in Unkindness of Ghosts, River Solomon's writing in that book is not meant to be comfortable because the characters are not comfortable with their life. And you really get that. It's still a great book that doesn't change anything. So no, reading does not always have to be enjoyable. But I think this is where the reader needs to be honest about why they are reading something. If you're reading a fiction book for entertainment, then yeah, you're going to want that to be an enjoyable read. But if you're sitting down to read something that you know is genre bending or critically acclaimed, or you're reading a nonfiction for information, no, you might not have an enjoyable reading experience. Seven, is it important to be well read? And I'm going to say yes, it is. I think reading a variety of things is important, but I think that also depends on the person on what they consider to be a variety. For me, I have fiction, I have nonfiction, I like reading memoirs, I like reading graphic novels, I enjoy reading widely, and by doing so, I see themes from my fiction that are in my nonfiction, and that they work together. Again, you know, working on that empathy muscle so that I can understand more people's points of view. I think that many people say if you're well read, they take it as you might think that you're superior or elite, and I don't think that's what being well read means. I think you can be well read with a third grade education. It really just means that you are attempting to understand the world better. Eight, what is your book buying process? Well, for this year, for 2024, I am looking to purchase mostly books that I love. I want to build up my collection of books that I like to read, especially books that I know that I will want to reread. We have two local indie bookstores, one that primarily focuses on newer fiction and one that is where you can like go and trade in older fiction. And so I like looking there first before I go venture farther afield. I like using the library and I, the library here in my community puts on a book sale like once a month and the proceeds go to like help fund the library so then they can buy more recent things as well. But that's kind of where I look to buy most of my books. Number nine, what is your reading process? Well, I'm a mood reader. Hi. So that's why I have all these books behind me that are on my physical to be read shelf. And then I have a list of books on Goodreads. Let's just pull it up and see. So on Goodreads, on my want to read list, I am at 20,739 books. Some of these are on that list. But yes, I have a huge want to read list. And as I'm a mood reader, it just kind of depends on what I'm going to pick up, what I'm going to be in the mood for. I do like doing reading challenges, and that can help me pull things out sooner. 
But really, it just kind of depends on what I'm looking for, what's going to scratch my itch. Question number 10. How do you use what you read? And again, everything I read goes to that empathy muscle. <laughs> it's different perspectives. It could be enlightenment. For example, I was reading The City We Became in the summer of 2020, right at the time that we were having the Black Lives Matters and George Floyd protests. And it came to a part in the book where a white person starts filming a black person in a park. And I was like, really? That's really dumb. And then two days later on the news, the exact story. And I'm like, oh shit, no, the author's saying that this actually happens. And it just put that book into so much more context than I had. I'm not as familiar with New York. I live in a city that is 60 to 70 percent white. The interactions I see on a daily basis look very different. So I think that book was exceptionally important and then reading it along with that backdrop just put it further into context. And again, empathy. 11. If you could download a book to your brain, would you still read? Yes. Yes, I would. I think downloading a book to my brain kind of seems like instant communication, instant knowledge. I don't know. I might do more nonfiction books for instant download and then still just read my fiction books for fun. Question number 12. What are your views on rereading a book? And I love rereading. My own shelf is books that I want to reread. That is my goal, is to have books that I want to reread on my physical shelf. So I'm not so much a book collector. If one day this technology video dies, I have a whole bunch of books that I am going to enjoy rereading over and over and over. So yes, I am very much pro rereading. Question number 13, what makes a book good? And again, I've talked about, I need the characters. They need to be compelling. That narrative voice needs to be there for me. I very much gravitate to stories with a found family. Having characters drive the story versus just be in it or the plot affect it, I, I like my characters to be very active. 14. What makes a book bad? Dialogue where everyone sounds the same. If I have to reread a page to kind of be like, who says what, when? Yeah, that, that can kick me out of a book. Typos, misspellings, those repeatedly can throw me out of a book. Pages and pages upon pages of descriptions. And yeah, that is kind of a jab at Tolkien. The first few times I tried to read them, I couldn't stand them. It took me a long time. Actually, it took me watching the movies to help me go back and read the actual books. There's some epic sci-fi that is the same way. I'm just like, we don't need all this information. It doesn't affect us. Why is it here? Question number 15. How do you feel about not finishing a book? And I'm okay with it. As a mood reader, there's so many times like I will put a book down because I'm not in the mood for it. And it's not actually a DNF. I will come back to it. I mean, there's several on here. If you watched my video of these books might explode, a few of those books are on my 2024 list to read. And I even say that I have already started this book. I just want to finish it. So as a mood reader, it's very easy for me to do that. But if a book's just not connecting with me, yeah, I don't mind sending it back to the library and or giving away to somebody else and just be like, this book is not for me. And that is okay. When I DNF, it's typically not me going, this book is awful. This book should never have been written. It's more like, oh, this book doesn't work for me. Well, let's give it to somebody who I think it might work for better. That is kind of my mental process when I'm like, oh, not going to finish this myself. If I own it, who would like to read this? Question number 16. Should the author's personal life matter at all? I know our society has gotten into this cult of personality kind of life with social media, but I never have. 
yes, I find out about different authors and behave, them behaving badly or behaving egregiously depending on the author and finding out about that can affect whether or not I want to read their book but I don't go researching an author ahead of time. So I'm, if I'm at the library, if I am at the bookstore, I see a book that interests me, I'm going to take the book and start reading it. I don't look up information about the author before I read it or in order to decide whether I'm going to read it. Again, I'm not a cult of personality person and I don't follow a whole lot of authors myself because what I have found over time is when I do, I really like the author's personalities and then rarely do I like the written work. There's a few exceptions, like I do enjoy Mer Lafferty and I do enjoy her books. I do enjoy Kristen Kishore and I do enjoy her books. But there's so many other authors, like I like Mary Robinette Cowell. I don't necessarily like what she writes. But I think that she is a fascinating person, and I love listening to her talk about the writing craft. I learned so much as an aspiring author from what she talks about. Yeah, what happens in their author's personal lives, what they choose to share on social media, isn't the motivating factor of whether or not I read their books, because I don't look for that. Question 17. If you could only read one genre for the rest of time, what would it be? And that is super easy. That would be science fiction. And that's because science fiction encompasses a wide range of subgenres. You have my favorite subgenre of space opera, and then you also have solar punk. You can have hard sci-fi. And so just with science fiction, I will get a wide variety of things that I can read forever. 18. Do you ever read a book without knowing anything about it? Yes. Yeah, I do. Yes, I have 20,000 books on my want to read list. At one point I have probably read the synopsis, but by the time I pick something up, I might not have no clue what this book is about anymore because I don't remember the synopsis or the summary. And so I'm going into it blind, essentially. So I, yes, I frequently will do this. Even with the books on my shelf, something made me pick them up. But by the time I get to reading them, because I'm a mood reader, that doesn't mean that I'm going to remember what they're about before I start reading them. And I'm okay with that. Just knowing, okay, this is sci-fi. I'm going to read this. Or this is fantasy. Or, you know, this is a memoir. That's all I really need to know. 19. What author, genre, series, or culture can you just not get into? Why? So I am not a thriller horror fan. That is just not, that is just not something that I have really been able to get into. And while I say this, I am lately learning I like certain elements of horror, kind of like What Moves the Dead and Mexican Gothic. Those worked for me, but overall, no, not necessarily. And as I've talked about, I really like sci-fi, but Blake Crouch is an author who his sci-fi doesn't work for me. I know it works for a lot of people, but I just have not been able to jive with his storytelling. And so when I see people talk about his books, I'm less inclined to pick him up. That doesn't mean that I will never try his writing again. I just know if I pick it up that, oh, I'm experimenting. Will I like this this time? And if it doesn't work for me, I'm not going to stress too much about it. And number 20, do you think everyone should read and why? And yes, I think everyone should read. You get to choose what you read. That is fine. But again, it goes back to reading builds that empathy muscle and everybody needs that in order to survive in this world. And also reading is a skill. It's a skill that everyone needs to have in their life because one day what if this doesn't exist what if we don't have video or the internet what are those people going to do who don't read I really am sad for that maybe potential eventual future especially if you're somebody who likes dystopians 
think about it. What would happen if you have somebody who doesn't read and everything that they do like to do disappears one day? That could be really sad. So, yes, everybody should read. I, I, I really think they should. But you get to choose what you read and you get to choose how you read. If you have never done this video before, you're tagged because I want to see what your philosophy opinions are. I realize this is probably a little bit older tag and has gone through a lot of people already, but if you're new to booktube, or like I said, if you've never done it, you're tagged because I want to hear your opinions. Thank you and have a great day.